the difference between a normal person and God or an avatar. So let's first begin with some nice mantras that I always chant. Trinadapi Sunice Na Torod Iva Sahishnuna Amanina Manadena Kirtaniya Sada Hari Hare Nama Hare Nama Hare Nama Iva Kivalam Kalo Nastyeva 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 Gatir Anyata Let me just adjust my camera here. Okay. And then of course, let us chant the auspicious 12 syllable mantra. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. So, in this topic, the difference between a normal person and an avatar, there is a very important uh, verse from the Chaitanya Charitamrita. Prabhupada quotes this verse throughout his purports. Brahma Pramada Vipralipsa Karanapatava Arsha Vigya Vake Nahi Dosha E Shabha. Of course, this is Bengali. The verse here says, an ordinary human being is inherent with four defects. Number one, we are sure to commit mistakes. Number two, invariably we become illusioned. Number three, we have a tendency to cheat others. And number four, we are limited by imperfect senses. So these are the four inherent defects of any conditioned soul. But God, or an avatar, does not have these four defects. That is why we read Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad, there is no mistake in Bhagavad Gita. There is no illusion in Bhagavad Gita. And Bhagavad Gita is not meant to cheat anyone. And since Bhagavad Gita is spoken by Sri Krishna, Krishna's senses are perfect. Krishna's senses are unlimited. So there's no deficiency, no sensory deficiency in the Bhagavad Gita. Prabhupada in one of his purports in the Bhagavad Gita says, the avatar or incarnation of God descends from the kingdom of God for material manifestation. And the particular form of God who so, so descends is called an incarnation or avatar. Such incarnations are situated in the spiritual world in the kingdom of God. And when they descend to the material creation, they assume the name Avatar. So we are all, all of us are familiar. Rama Avatar, Krishna Avatar, Nasringa Avatar, so many Avatars. Prabhupada continues, there are various kinds of Avatars. Purusha Avatar, so the Purusha Shirodakashi, Garbodakshai, and uh, Karandakshai, Mahavishnu, Garbodakshai Vishnu, and Shirodakshai. Those are the Purusha avatars. Guna avatars, such as Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva. <coughs> Lord Brahma is in charge of the mode of passion. Vishnu takes charge of the mode of goodness. And Mahadev, Lord Shiva, takes charge of the mode of ignorance. Then there are Leva, Leela avatars. Matsya, Kurma, Varaha, Nisringa, Vamana, Parashuram, Ramachandra, Buddha, Kalki. So many Leela or pastime incarnations. 
Shaktya Avesh avatars. My favorite Shaktya Avesh, Veda Vyas, Vyasadeva. And then there are Manvantara avatars, such as Swayam Bhuva Manu. And then there are the four Yuga avatars. And the Yuga avatar for the age of Kali is Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. All of these appear on schedule all over the universe. But Lord Krishna is the primeval Lord, the fountainhead of all the avatars. So this is the main thesis of Srimad Bhagavatam. Krishna's two Bhagavan Swayam. Krishna's two Bhagavan Swayam is the whole gist of Bhagavatam. Simply trying to impress upon the reader in so many different narrations how Krishna is the original source of all incarnations. The very third chapter of the first canto, Krishna, the source of all incarnations. Now, our sponsor, Sham Narayan Singh, was uh, requesting that I answer his questions as much as possible from Bhagavad Gita. So yes, there are several shlokas in Bhagavad Gita which explain the difference between an ordinary human being or conditioned soul and God. First of all, from chapter 15, Mamai Bangsho Jiva Loke Jiva Bhuta Sanatana Manakshashtan Indriyani Prakriti Shtani Karshati The living entities in this conditioned world are my eternal fragmental parts. Due to conditioned life, they are struggling very hard with the six senses, which include the mind. So that is our condition as conditioned souls. We are struggling for existence. God or an avatar doesn't have to struggle for existence, but a ordinary conditioned soul has to struggle as many of us are struggling now here, not only in America, but all over the world. People are struggling just to maintain. All right. Now we have another verse from Bhagavad Gita, from the 18th chapter. Natad asti pratibhyang va divi deveshu va puna satvang prakriti jaya muktam yad ebi syatribir guna. There is no being existing, either here or among the demigods in the higher planetary systems, who is freed from these three modes of material nature. So yes, everyone is affected by the modes of nature, either goodness, passion, or ignorance. And we are all affected by varying degrees of these modes. So the avatar or God is not in this situation. The very nature of an avatar or God is that he is transcendental to the modes. But an ordinary human being, and it says here, Krishna says, even the demigods are still under the control of the modes of material nature. Then we have this next verse from third chapter. Yagyarthat karmano nyatra Loko yam karma bandana, tad artham karma kaunteya, mukta sangha samatara. Work done as a sacrifice for Vishnu has to be performed. Otherwise, work causes bondage in this material world. Therefore, O son of Kunti, perform your prescribed duties for the satisfaction of Lord Vishnu, and in that way, you will always remain free from bondage. So as human beings, as conditioned souls, if we do not work for the satisfaction of Vishnu or God, 
we will be held responsible. There will be reactions. So human life is one of responsibility. Name partasti kartavyam trishu lokeshu kinchana nana vaptam avaptavyam varta eva chakarmani. But Krishna says, O son of Prata, there is no work prescribed for me within all the three planetary systems. That is another difference between us and God. We have prescribed duties. God does not. Nor am I in want of anything. Nor have I a need to attain anything. Why? Because God is Atmaram. He is already self-satisfied. He doesn't need to do anything. But we, we need so many things. And then Krishna says, and yet... I am engaged in prescribed duties. So the question is, if there's no prescribed work for God, then why does Krishna say, I engage in prescribed duties? And that is also explained in Bhagavad Gita. Krishna says, I do that to set an example for all human beings. All of you are quite familiar with the Rama avatar. And Lord Ram did not have to do any prescribed duties, but to set the example. And he's the best example of the ideal human being, the ideal king, the ideal son. He taught us by his example how we should behave, even though it was not necessary for him. Then we have another verse from Bhagavad Gita. Bahuni me vyatitani janmani tavacharjuna tanyahang veda sarvani natvang veta parantapa. Many, many births, both you and I have passed, Arjuna. I can remember all of them, but you cannot. So here is a very, very clear verse. The difference between a conditioned soul or an ordinary human being and God. Krishna said, I know all my past births. You might recall on the night of Krishna's appearance in the prison house of Vasudeva and Devaki. Krishna informed Vasudeva and Devaki that this was the third time he was appearing as their son. So Krishna remembers that he was Prishni Garba, that he was Vamana Dev. So Krishna here says, I know all my past appearances, but we do not. We do not know who we were in our last life or previous lives. So that is one glaring difference between a human being and God. Now another verse from Bhagavad Gita. Namang karmani limpanti name karma phale spriha itimang yo bijanati karma bir nasabadyate. Krishna says, There is no work that affects me, nor do I aspire for the fruits of actions. One who understands this truth about me also does not become entangled in the fruitive reactions of work. So, God, no matter what he does, nothing affects him. And there's nothing he's trying to achieve, as I said before. He's Atma Ram, fully satisfied. So if we can uh, appreciate, if we can understand this fact about Krishna, Krishna says, you will also not become entangled. So this is why we study Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita so that we don't become entangled. So it's very good that you are all participating in these weekly uh, Zoom Namahat programs because you are being purified. You're getting so much benefit it cannot be calculated. So make sure you come week after week after week and get the full benefit. 
Another verse in Bhagavad Gita. Bhoktarang yagya tapasang sarvaloka maheshwaram sukhridang sarvabhutanang yatva mang shantam richati. A person in full consciousness of me, knowing me to be the ultimate beneficiary of all sacrifices and austerities, the Supreme Lord of all planets and demigods, and the benefactor and well-wisher of all living entities attains peace from the pangs of material activities. So here is what it means to be God. Number one, you are the supreme enjoyer. None of us can claim that he or she is the supreme enjoyer. We can enjoy for a little while, but eventually we suffer. But Krishna says, I am the enjoyer. Number two, Krishna is the proprietor. Everything is Krishna's property, whether it be the plan heavenly planets, middle planets, lower planets, the spiritual world. Everything comes from Krishna. And here is the third one, the benefactor and well-wisher of all living entities. That is another qualification of God. He's in everyone's heart, and therefore, He is your best well-wishing friend. Always remember, Krishna in your heart is your dear most well-wishing friend. So, if you're in anxiety right now because of this coronavirus, if you are in anxiety, take shelter of Krishna in your heart because he is your best well-wishing friend. Another verse. Aparayam itasthvanyang prakriting vidime param jivabhutang mahabaho yayedang dharyate jagat. Besides the eight inferior material natures, there is another superior energy of mind, which comprises the living entities. So we are Krishna's energies. So we are, as we said earlier, part and parcel of Krishna, like a particle of sunlight emanating from the sun. We are expansions of Krishna, but we are the limited expansions of Krishna. All the avatars, all the Vishnu avatars, they are, you can say, equal expansions. They all have the same potency as Krishna. But we, the living entity, Jiva, as it says here, Jiva Bhuta, we are in the category of Jiva. We are the limited expansion of God. Sorry, you're not God. You are the limited expansion of God, according to what Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita. The Mayavadis, the impersonalists, they try to cheat people, telling them, oh, you are God. But they're cheating. That's not what Krishna is saying here in Bhagavad Gita. We are His energy. We are infinitesimal. Vishnu is infinite but we are infinitesimal, tiny, tiny, tiny spark of Krishna. Another verse in Bhagavad Gita. Tribir gunamayar bhayavayar ebi sarvam idang jagat mohitang nabijanati mam ebya parang avyayam Deluded by the three modes, goodness, passion, and ignorance, the whole world does not know me because I am above the modes and inexhaustible. Another major difference between God and the living entities. We become deluded by goodness, passion, and ignorance. But Krishna, or the avatar, is transcendental. He's above the modes. In chapter 7, another verse. Vedahang samatitani 
वर्तमानानि च अर्जुन भविष्यानि च भूतानि मान तु वेद न कश्चिद अर्जुन एज गॉड आई नो एवरीथिंग दैट इज हैपेंड इन द पास्ट ऑल दैट इज हैपेनिंग इन द प्रेजेंट एंड ऑल थिंग्स दैट आर येट टू कम एंड आई आल्सो नो ऑल लिविंग एंटिटीज बट मी no one knows so here's another difference we do not know past we know a little bit of the present and if we knew the future ha huh, then we would know how to play the stock market but we don't know but krishna knows he knows past present and future another verse from gita coming puranam anushasitaram अनो अनियांसंग अनुस्मरेद य सर्वस्य दात्तारम अचित्य रूपम अदित्य वर्णं तमसा परस्ता वन शुड मेडिटेट अपॉन मी एज द सुप्रीम पर्सन एज द वन हु नोज एवरीथिंग द वन हु इज द ओल्डेस्ट द वन हु द वन हु इज द कंट्रोलर the one who is smaller than the smallest the one who is the maintainer of everything the one who is beyond all material conception the one who is inconceivable the one who is always a person the one who is luminous like the sun and the one who is transcendental beyond this material nature so this is why real yogis bona fide yogis they do meditation on krishna in the heart based on this understanding they're meditating on krishna in the heart lord shiva meditates on krishna in the heart these are the reasons why avajananti mang mudha manushing tanum asritam parang bhava majananto Mama Bhuta Maheshwaram Fools deride me when I descend in the human form They do not know my transcendental nature as the supreme lord of all that be We are not the supreme lord of all that be but Krishna is Then in the 15th chapter Dva vimao purusha loke kshara chakshara evacha Shara Sarvani Bhutani Kuto Sto Shara Uchate There are two classes of living beings the fallible and the infallible In the material world every living entity is fallible and in the spiritual world every living entity is infallible So we are residents of the material world and we started off with the four defects those four defects make us fallible then after two verses krishna says this yasmat sharang atito ham aksharad apichotama atosmi loke bede cha pratita pudushotama finally krishna makes the distinction because i am transcendental beyond both the fallible and the infallible and because i am the greatest i am celebrated both in the world and in the vedas as the supreme person so this final verse that i selected that krishna he just said everything everybody in the material world fallible everyone in the spiritual world infallible but Krishna says I am above both of them This is important Even when we are liberated and we go back to the kingdom of God we also will still remain subordinate and therefore this name of Krishna Purushottama the transcendental supreme person Are that ends part 1